Good evening, Boutique Dave here. Welcome to my little talk on rye whiskey. Um, I hope you're all up for rye, wh rye whiskey. Um, yeah, we're streaming live on multiple channels, fingers crossed. I mean, I don't know, I can't see if we are or not. And um, fingers crossed we are, or well, I'm just talking to myself. Um, but this evening, we've got a lot to go through. Nine rye, ah, someone said hello, hello, someone said hello on Facebook, Kieran, welcome, uh, okay, everything's coming through, cool, that's good, nine rye whiskies, we've got a lot to go through, um, nine rye whiskies and a single malt, hopefully, good evening, um, yeah, six brand new labels, um, two you may have seen before, and one that got lost in really far too much going on last year, where I was absolutely everywhere, and um, yeah, just, we didn't give it any love. So we, we pulled it out and um, rye whiskeys from the USA, five of them and four whiskeys from the Europe. So yeah, lots to do. Um, we've got, uh, welcome to my little office. Um, stuck here since March. I uh, haven't been out of here yet. I'm looking forward to getting out as soon as possible. This is not my forte of sitting in front of a computer, but that's life. Uh, um, in 2020 and hopefully 2021 it's back in real life so yeah I miss seeing you all um, yeah rye whiskies from the US of A the home oh, the spiritual home of, of um, rye whiskey really European settlers found rye grew much easier uh, in the conditions of the founding states uh, Pennsylvania and Maryland styles became popular long before the corn whiskey of Kentucky that was later went on to become bourbon now, rye whiskey sort of started dying um, slowly. Uh, prohibition didn't do it any favours at all, but um, really sort of wiped rye whiskey styles out completely. But it was before prohibition, during the First World War, the American government subsidised corn, which was the first nail in a, in a coffin, and the second nail in a coffin was in the Second World War, they subsidised corn again. So corn got cheaper um, and rye just became difficult. Well, it is difficult to, 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 um, to work with, as we were finding out when we've been talking to the distillers recently. Now, prohibition was from 1920 to 1933, 13 years of no whiskey making in the States. There were 10. Just think about this. Really put this into your head. Just 10 licenses granted to distillers for medicinal alcohol um, during that period. And only six were taken up. Just six distilleries in the whole of the United States during those period. Um, the decline of rye. It just yeah it disappeared. Pennsylvania, Maryland, New York was a sea as we will find out shortly, uh, a sea of stills once upon a time. Rye in Europe, yeah, it's been distilled for a long, long time. In Poland, there's something called Starka, which is actually an, a wood-aged rye uh, spirit. Um, and in Germany, there's corn or corn brown, which is generally drunk as a new make spirit, uh, as we were listening to Bastian from the uh, Spreewood distillery a couple of weeks ago. So why rye? I mean, it's a pretty brave thing to release nine rye whiskies. Rye doesn't seem to suit everybody. It is a slightly different, that's a very different flavour from single malt. It's often said to be more suited to the more experienced drinker. Now, I don't know about that, but those who do get it fall in love and are smitten. Now, I remember my very first rye way back in 2012, it was a millstone rye, and I just fell in love with rye whiskey. It is a classic cocktail favourite. However, we saw it, it just fell out of fashion. Um, and it's certainly, although rye was still being made in the States after Prohibition, after the Second World War, it would became a sort of a bottom shelf spirit for a lot. Um, it fell by the wayside, really, to the vodka boom of the 80s and 90s. But it has enjoyed certainly over the last 10 years a huge resurgence a big big comeback i've got the notes down here rye whiskey production in the usa has increased 1275 percent since 2009 and they were the 2019 figures from the distilled spirits council in the us of a 
So cocktails, I mentioned cocktails. I love sipping cocktails and I like making a few. I can only make three, an old fashioned, <laughs> a Manhattan and a Boulevardia. There are my three cocktails and they have to be rye to me. They, they have to be rye. You know, rye whiskey does play a critical role in the cocktail scene. And that's been really the, the beginnings of this comeback of, of rye whiskey. Um, there's something about that flavor profile, that quintessential baking spice character of rye whiskey that sort of lifts the drink. Yeah, it's not an old fashioned to me unless it's out of rye. So we're gonna run through, I want to run through all of them. I know you haven't got all of them. Um, we're gonna taste the Americans first because that is sort of the spiritual home. Uh, I want to start with the empire. Uh, I think you've all got the empire uh, right, which is kind of special. I'm really looking forward to um, telling you all about that. I and mean, then I want to talk about copper sea. I don't know if all of you have got copper sea. And I'm going to go to Tennessee, uh, over to Kentucky, to Peerless, and then all the way up to Colorado for Distillery 291. And then we'll fly back over the channel and we'll go to Germany for the Spreewood Distillers, um, up to Denmark for Stowning, up to Finland for Helsinki, and we'll end up in the Netherlands, which is Incidentally, where I started my rye journey way back in eight years ago, my first rye I had. Uh, yeah, good evening, you all. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. There's lots of comments coming up there. If any questions, um, I will find them eventually. Um, not this minute. I'm going to try um, the beard ponytail. Yeah, well, this, my beard is so long now. And if you go out in the wind, it blows all over the show. And so I've actually got it weighted as well, Ros. <laughs> So it doesn't blow around anymore and it's practical. Okay, there we go. So let's, um, should we pour the first whiskey? I know you're itching to have your first whiskey. Now, at any time in this session, um, we could be, the doorbell could go and um, Annabelle Thomas from McNean will be joining us uh, to tell us about that little um, release that's sadly disappeared over here. It sold out pretty quickly in the UK, but I know quite a bit of it went over to Europe as well. So if you're in Europe, some of our European distributors definitely had some big portions of um, of that. Um, I'm going to pour the Empire Rye. Um, it is a two-year-old. Yeah, I say whiskey. Um, you might have heard me beef about this um, because you can't tell me that that ain't a whiskey. I mean, that's all natural colour. Just two years of age, um, and it's a bloody whiskey, but we're not allowed to call it a whiskey over here. Let's have a wee sip of this. So yeah, two years old. It's a blended rye. We bottled this at 50% ABV. There are just 623 bottles of this first batch. 50% um, ABV and the recommended retail price for this is 49.95. 50 pound. A silver coin under 50 pound. So our very own Dr. Whiskey has created the very first Empire Rye Blend, a blend of nine different New York State distilleries, all of them specifically Empire Rye. So what is Empire Rye, I hear you ask? Well, it has just been ratified and made official in October of this year. So just a month ago, so about just about the same time as we released these, to be honest, I think they had their certificate come through. In 2015, six leading New York distilleries created a consortium to establish a whiskey style for the Empire State. Uh, Empire State whiskey. This is um, a particular style of whiskey. It follows the rye whiskey rules of, of the United States, minimum 51% um, rye uh, aged in new charred oak barrels. And this is um, now a federal, federally recognized certification. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about this and hear Sam talk about this, you can join us for our Friday Rye Day session uh, with Sam tomorrow afternoon at four o'clock. And um, Sam will be our blender coming in to telling us about how we put this together, you know, blending rye from some of these distilleries. And they are, you know, these, these most of the New York distilleries that we've been working with are quite small farm yard, farm, not yard distillery, but farm distilleries and beautiful distilleries. And this is just, I, I think this is 
got this absolutely perfect. It's so well balanced. It's dangerously drinkable. It's at a much lower level look than the others because before I even wrote any notes, I had two big slugs of it and think, God, this is good. I don't know what you think, but I mean, I get that little bit of, as soon as I open this, that little bit of dustiness, it's sweet, that hint of petrichor, those first rains on a dusty ground. And then it sort of sweetens up. There's that manuka honey, that earthiness, earthy, earthy spices, and a little bit of red licorice boot lace there. It's just yum, yum, yum. Thank you, Justin. It's, um, yeah, I've fallen in love with bowler hats. I've always wanted one, and uh, I bought one just recently. I bought two, actually. So, yeah, this is beautifully balanced, creamy, honey sweetness, and you get those earthy, and I think I know where these earthy um, spices are coming from, from our next distillery. Um, yeah, so many of these ryes have that rye bread. You know, I, I, I'm a baker. Um, bake my own bread. I don't buy bread anymore. Um, and I always have rye flour in the cupboard. I don't use all rye, but um, I use a good percentage of rye to get that. It's not pure rye bread as you get over in, in Europe. But it's just a deliciously balanced. Now, I haven't tried making any cocktails with this. Um, I really have just been sipping it. And it is delicious. And I've already bought a bottle because um, I didn't want to lose out because it, it is just superb. I'm really impressed with what Sam has done with this. Mm. Love your notes. Yeah, raw honey feel, that earthiness coming through, those earthy spices. And on that finish, I don't know if you ever chewed licorice root as a kid. It's something I used to love chewing as a kid, buying the from the health shop. I can't remember where it was. One of those health shops that you could buy the sticks and chew them and then spit the stick out afterwards. I'm just getting a little bit of that at the end. Oh, so good. Mm. All right, I'll come back to that in a minute. Because I think I can taste the next whiskey in there. Um, now this is, um, a copper, a copper sea um, rye. It is. I fell in love with this place. I visited this distillery in January or February last year. Um, it is a tiny little distillery on a farm. Now this is a little agricultural, and I absolutely love it. This is the other end of that rye scale. It is a hundred percent malted rye. Copper C, it's a three-year-old, so it is a whiskey. We can put whiskey on the label. It is a, um, I'm gonna change that so I don't change the screen. Let's go, there we go, Excelsior. Um, three-year-old, it is uh, a whiskey, 49.8% ABV, just 168 bottles on this release. Recommended retail price, 64.95. Now you can't find any Copper C outside of, New York State, I would say. Um, it is one of the founding distilleries of the Empire Rye category. It is a true farm to gla glass distillery. 100% floor malted rye whiskey, open top fer fermentation, small direct fire copper pot stills. They say if a distiller from the 19th century was to suddenly appear on site, they would certainly know their way around the process and equipment. And yes, they certainly would. These copper pot stills are sitting there, um, live gas rings underneath. The tops of them are sealed with a rye paste as they put the heads on. Um, there's no spirit safe. There's a lovely uh, spirit receiver. Um, it's a milk churn. And you put the heads in the first milk chain churn, and, and when the hearts come along, you, you switch them along and put the next one in. And as the tails come through, you switch it again. Milk churns, live spirit, live flames next to it. Um, yeah, take pictures, put your finger in it. I mean, it's just a fabulous distillery. It's, there's, there's no bells and whistles there. It is in a converted cow shed. 
horse stables, big place, um, just spray foamed everywhere, just to insulate it a little bit. Beautiful in the middle of nowhere and the Hudson Valley. I um, absolutely love this place. I fell in love with this little place. I fell in love with their whiskey. It's really, really earthy. Now, this has that rye sour, sourdough starter sort of flavor coming through. Linseed putty is another note I wrote down. Again, that earthy honey. And I'm getting those earthy spices like turmeric and caraway. Oh, I just really love what they do. Um, they have a really uh, another product there called um, Old Angus. Old Angus, a green malt. So malted barley that is green. They haven't dried it. So they do everything on site. All the the grain comes from within 20 miles. If it doesn't come on the farm itself, within 20 miles. They're working with New York State Coopers. Um, it is. They do everything themselves. It is a real sense of place. And this takes me back to that place. It was the middle of the winter. There was foot deep snow on the fields. It's, it is really earthy. Um, I absolutely love this. It makes a great cocktail as well. It makes a great old fashioned. It makes a great Manhattan. I bought a bottle back with me of their, their own bottling. Um, our label on this one, as you can see there, is that is the distillery, the farm, the old farm down there. Now, I visited two distilleries in that valley. There's a sea of them. It's called Copper Sea because the Empire State used to be a sea of stills. Everybody made their whiskey in those days. And it was rye, the prevalent spirit of the United States before, well before bourbon. And that is the Bonticu Crag, there's a mountain there. And you just, when you're there, you just try to think back of when the first settlers came and, and how much was unknown at that point. I mean, it really does. You, you are in a little bit out in the middle of nowhere there, and it does feel a little bit remote. remote. And you could imagine the Native Americans on the top um, watching the settlers come through there. It, it is it is beautiful. But now I love this whiskey. It is one of my... It's, it is really earthy, isn't it? Mm. not for everyone but uh, it just takes me back there and it's just the pa the people are passionate about what they're doing you know there's there's no bullshit there i mean they are making great whiskey oh, superb stuff so that's sort of the original i would say probably the original style of a very very old style of, of Right, malted, 100%, post floor malted, all on the farm, um, just how it would have been done years ago, before rules came in and saying minimum 51% mash bill. Just superb. I hope you love this um, copper sea as much as I do. Mm. Now, I bought some water because it's always good to just rinse. It is, isn't it? It's fruity, isn't it? Um, I, You just want, you won't see copper sea. I mean, it really is a, such a small distillery there that the, the warehouse is a farm building on site and it's rammed in there. Um, yeah, they can they can bottle whiskey much younger than, than we would over here. Um, so two years old, three years old. This was a three-year-old, but yeah, you can bottle whiskey. We've got an eleven-month-old shortly, and uh, you you'll be really surprised at that. Um, let's go for a modern rye with the Tennessee. I don't know if, who's got a Tennessee and who hasn't. If it's on, everyone's got the Tennessee. I can't remember what the full list. I just wanted to talk about them all because I think they're all absolutely beautiful whiskies, and. They're all so close between 11 months and I think the oldest is four years old. So 11 months to four years old. They're all rye whiskies. I'm going to call them whiskies, uh, although we're not allowed to label them as whiskies, all of them, um, because they are whiskies to me. Uh, they're also close, yet also very different. So this is a Tennessee rye whiskey. It's four years old. I will flick my little screen for the next thing here. Um, you will have seen this label before. 
Uh, we bottled this at 45% ABV. There are just 300 bottles, and this is one silver coin short of £39, £38.95. This is unmalted rye, 95% in the mash bill, 5% malted barley. It would have been in toasted and charred virgin oak casks, following the US rules, just like all the others. Um, high rye, but unmalted. So the one we've just had, and probably some of the Empire Rye's there would have had a mixture of malted and um, uh, unmalted. I don't know all the distilleries in the makeup of this nine. I just know Copper Sea will be one. Um, Copper Sea, 100% floor malted rye, grain, um, they use enzyme. Uh, no, they don't use that. It's unmalted. So this is unmalted and malted barley. Now, Tennessee had a long, long history of making whiskey in the state, but prohibition really messed them about. Now, they started early by some 13 years. 1907, prohibition started in Tennessee, and it stayed late until 1938 completely destroyed a long history of whiskey making in the state. There are two big distillers in Tennessee. I mean, there is a Tennessee whiskey trail now. You know, there's a Kentucky whiskey trail. There is a Tennessee whiskey trail now. Jack Daniels were the first people back in operation and Dickel uh, moved back in the 50s. So Dickel, an old established distilling company, did survive Prohibition, but when they started up again because of Prohibition, um, they started up in Kentucky and stayed in Kentucky until, actually they came into, it's a long story, but they came into Tennessee around in the 50s when the original family of the Jack Daniels distillery were looking to sell and they wanted to buy the distillery and they were turned down. And they went with Bean, who owned Jack Daniels today. So, yes, Dickel moved back in the 1950s, and their mission was to, well, if I can't buy you, we're going to overtake you. And um, that's what they tried to do. But I think that the difference is one to 100 between Dickel and JD still at, at the moment. Now, we can't name. Oh, this is so, this is so delicious. It's so fruity. Um, we can't name this distillery. It's an unnamed distillery, but it is a Tennessee rye, which means it uses the Lincoln County process to run through um, all the new make spirits. So the Lincoln County process is a process that was previously known as leaching or charcoal leaching. And it was something that Jack Daniels continued to do. It was something that was done a long, long, long time ago when they were putting just new make spirit through this sugar maple uh, charcoal just to soften it from that moonshine sort of feel so it did do that but they they, they realized it was, it was a good thing to do to carry on doing uh, before they put it into the cast so that's what's unique about Tennessee whiskey so call it a Tennessee whiskey it generally I think there's one or two exceptions but it generally has to have this Lincoln County process now the Lincoln County process wasn't really called that it was a, a marketing term really when the, i think it was a molson family were trying to sell jack daniels they wanted something unique they wanted something catchy they didn't want to call it you know it, it was a unique process before no one else did it it was only done in tennessee they wanted a, a yeah it was it was marketing we can't call it leaching it sounds dreadful um so yes they invented the lincoln county well, they didn't invent it it was something that was around they just gave it a name a nicer name and Lincoln County was where the original Jack Daniels distillery started. And counties have moved around and everything. And so it's not actually in Lincoln County anymore, but it is called the Lincoln County process. And they both do something quite different. So they do something similar, but they do things differently. One's trickled, one is dropped through. Um, oh, this is just so tropical fruit. I mean, I'm getting loads of like papaya on the nose. I absolutely love it. It's got like lots, if you've ever had ripe papaya in the Far East and they just give you a slice of um, a little squeeze of lime and you just run that across the top and this is what I'm just taking me out there. This is gluggable. I mean totally gluggable. It 
and there's that little bit. Remember, anyone old enough to remember blackboards at, at school and the blackboard rubber, that chalk, that's sort of typical of, of an unmalted rye. And that's what I'm getting at. But you remember the teacher would throw them at you? They threw them at me anyway. Mm. I mean, it's so creamy. It is really so creamy. And there's little bits of clove coming through and that bit of anise at the end. Oh, there's apricot, apricot, that's it. Papaya and apricot, it's dangerously good, isn't it? And a steel under 40 pound bottle and just 300 of them. So um, I better put that in my shopping list. So I've just seen a message there that Annabelle will be joining us at 8.30. So um, gluggable. Yeah, it is dangerously, dangerously gluggable, um, which is why I put the cork back in and put it back up on the um, on the shelf there because we've still got a lot to do. We've only three down. I mean, why do six whiskeys when you can do 10, huh? Just, yeah, this is um, one of my favourites. Uh, as, as a... It's very, very different from that copper sea, eh? Very, very different. Mm. Dried pineapple. Yeah, yeah, I can see exactly where you're coming from, Brian, on there. I mean, I'm just going to go with that papaya and apricot. You know, but everybody's different. You know, you can't be wrong, can you? Now, I haven't put any water in any of these. I have got water here in case I need to. Um, I don't know about you. I can't remember where my pipette is. I have no control of a jug and pouring a, um, a drop of water in. So I use a teaspoon because everybody has a teaspoon. You can always find a teaspoon, normally in your teenage children's bedroom where they all end up. Um, and much easier to clean. And, you know, pipettes get knocked on the floor and then they get filled. It's difficult. To, I don't use pipettes very often. I just use a teaspoon. Much more controllable. Um, I don't think any of these do. I don't think any of these are really over the top in their ABV. Mm. So let's have a swig. Um, it is, we've got three minutes. So um, let's have a look. A favourite today, uh, out of those first three, let's hold um, before we go on to the Peerless and the 291. Let's, um, let's take a break for Annabelle to come and talk to us. The cat chewed. There you go. See, teaspoons are so much more practical, Kieran. Um, everyone can find a teaspoon. So, any favourites out of the first three? I mean, they're all so, so different, aren't they? They are so different. I'm just going to put them in order there and just run back through them. That blend, the Empire Blenders. Really getting sort of fruity now. That's earthiness of that malted rye coming through on the copper sea. I still love it. I remember taking a bottle I bought back from the States in to, for Sam and he wasn't uh, immediately impressed, but I just love it. I don't know if I let Sam try the green malt. I bought some green malt back. I mean, that was fascinating. Really not everyone's cup of tea. I like it that you're getting the Empire. Yeah, the Empire is cool, isn't it? Yeah, Empire, Empire, Empire. This is good to hear. Because it's a first. You don't see many blended American whiskies, not of any great quality. Um, you know, it's not perfected. You know, it's, it's uh, you don't see a lot of collaboration. So this is good to see these Empire distilleries collaborating with us um, to create the Empire. It looks like everyone is um, championing the, uh, the Empire. So I'm going to um, stop sharing this thing here um, and get ready for Annabelle, because I have the Nicknean and the Nicknean ready to go. Nicknean, Annabelle should be joining us right now. Um, as it is, 
8.30. So I'll get that ready to go. And um, John can let me in for that one shortly. So, yeah, we we have been doing these themed releases. So our first theme was nine world whiskies. Our second theme is this nine rye whiskies. I mean, I don't think we can do nine every time, but there will be a loose theme. And so world and rye, there's a thing. But we're also releasing scotch whiskies at the same time. So we had nine scotch whiskies that we released at the same time. And um, one of them was a brand new distillery, just turned three years old in September. Uh, and that was Nucnean, um, which we will share. I'll get that up ready. Um, so when Annabelle joins us, we can, oh, it's flickering. Let's, does this every now and again? I had this problem at the whiskey show. So yeah, this, uh, the Nucnean, and I have a wee bottle. It sold out. Um, where did I put it? Yeah, I've got it already. Um, three year old. So yeah, it's first releases. Uh, the third actual release from the distillery. I think it just beat out their batch two. Did anyone get any of the inaugural release? I missed out. Snooze, you lose. Um, I, I did buy a bottle of batch one. It's open and delicious and um i didn't get i was too slow in getting one of these of our ones so i've just got the sample here and it's a cracker so yeah three years old just 374 and the highest uh boutique release to date 60.2 percent abv which i would suggest is pretty much cast strength Sound gone. Can you hear me? Um, does everyone hear me? Not if you can hear me, because I can't get any feedback at the moment. So I'm waiting for Annabelle to join me. Um, how do I check? I can check if my audio is working. It says my microphone's working here, Wim. Um, and so, uh, okay, Rosalind can hear me. So Wim, you need hearing aids like me, mate. Go and get them checked. All good at BTK HQ. Excellent. So, yeah, this is a three-year-old. It was a release of just 374 bottles at 60.2%. So I would suggest car strength. I know we bought one car, so it is a single car. So that's unusual. We never say at Boutique, we never say single car, single car strength because something, sometimes they are. And sometimes they're not. Hello. How are you? Very well. How are you? Ah, oh, fantastic. Lovely to see you. Thank you very much Thank for coming you. and um, talking to us. Yeah, we, um, we've we got the highlight dram here. Uh, I didn't get hold of one. I know you've got, I'm sure you got hold of one, didn't you? I was I so did. and lost. Um, next, next time. There weren't very many of them, so. No, there wasn't, just 374, so hopefully there'll be another release um, soon. Exactly. So I, I got down, Nagnean is one of the new wave of Scottish farm distilleries. Yeah, That's, that's true, isn't it? I mean, yeah, founded in 2017 by Annabelle Thomas. Correct. Which happens to be you. Which happens to be me, what are the chances? On your family's farm in Drummond on the Morven Peninsula in the Western Highlands. Now, it's a bit of a bugger to get up to, isn't it? I mean, I was looking on Google Earth, and how do I get there to see it? Um, it you is, can wave to it the is, uh, Exactly. It is not exactly easy. So if you're coming from the Central Belt or England or anywhere further afield, you drive north for north and west for about three or three and a half hours about two thirds of the way into that drive, you have to take a ferry. And then once you're over the Corran Ferry, uh, it's about an hour's driving, most of which is on single track roads. And then you get to the end of the road and then it's another 10 minutes drive on the track. And finally you get to the distillery and then you can see Tobin Worry. <laughs> so you have to take a ferry wherever, anyway to get there? You don't have to, um, but the coast of Scotland up there is really kind of jaggedy. 
so if you um so you can drive around but it's like an extra hour so you want to avoid that at all costs not right. that you can because there's plenty of occasions when the ferry's off or you're too late or whatever but um, yes, it's definitely a Highland distillery. It is on the mainland. It's not on an island, is it? It is correct. A, a mainland distillery. It's just exactly. a little bit. It so, feels like an island, but it is technically on the mainland. Yeah, punchy at, at 60.2%, which is why I did warn you about going and getting your teaspoon for a drop of water. You might need it. Um, now, the Nicknean distillery, it is Nicknean, not Nicknean. Correct. Nicknean. Um, and it's been designed as the first fully organic modern distillery in Scotland, powered by 100% renewable energy. Indeed. Yeah. And sustainability has really been the heart of, the heart of what we do. And they, those two elements, it's not the only things that we do, but they were really important kind of founding principles, if you like, to everything we make is organic. And we have a lovely biomass boiler, which causes us plenty of headaches, but uses a renewable source of energy so that makes us happy yeah yeah if you want to know lots more about the distillery um from, from this level chat there is a great podcast uh on uncorked when we had annabelle and, and and robert from the toast brewing company where we talked about sustainability renewables um and going environmentally friendly whiskey really exactly and, and it, was, it, uh, it was a, it was a great great afternoon it um, was so wood chips for the biomass bio boiler are sourced from the local forest um, and all byproducts are recycled as animal and plant feed, really for the estate that you, you, you are on. It really just stays within the estate. Yeah, exactly. And we even chip our own wood. So uh, we have a, what our dis, one of our distillers is also our wood chipper. So he takes a tractor into the forest, chips the timber, comes back, tips it in the boiler and then goes back to the still house. <laughs> So while he's uh, running, running, uh, running the wash, Dell, he's off chipping. Yeah, exactly. He tries not to leave at a critical moment. So Nicknean is an abbreviation for what, Annabelle? Well, you're going to test my Gallic pronunciation here, which is not perfect. It must be said. Uh, Nish Nierhain. Nish Nierhain. Nish Nierhain. She's an ancient Gallic goddess. Yeah. Um, and she was known as a protector of nature and for walking her own path. So we're talking like really ancient here, pre-Christian times. Um, and she lived in the woods, kind of chilling out on her own with some deer, rather than feeling like she needed to join in with all the other gods and goddesses. So we, uh, yeah, we picked her because we thought it was a lovely story and kind of stood for what we were trying to do. So It's, it's a great story, isn't it? And is that's from that, from that area of where you are as well? Yeah. Ex yeah. It, I mean, yeah, I think, I don't think it's specifically from our area. I think... It's such ancient history, who knows where it was from? Because all of that was, you know, all of that was oral tradition back then as well, so. Yeah. Um, so Nuk is a, Nuk Nian and Nuk is a, an abbreviation of that. And Nuk is also a short form of Nick, or meaning daughter of like we have. Mac, yeah. Mac, Mac, exactly. McLean, so, yeah, yeah exactly. So MacDonald is son of Donald. Nish Neohain, so Nish is kind of the old, pronunciation and over time it's kind of changed to nook so nish neohain means amongst other things daughter of the divine or queen of spirits and so nick nian is kind of daughter of and we also quite like that yeah. upending of tradition nice absolutely um now you had jim we've got a lovely swan on the label because you i mean that was our little nod i love this label i know you said i remember you you seeing it and saying well i didn't really appear lots of firsts this year you were going on about yeah, our first single mock release and i never really expected to appear naked on a, on a label exactly <laughs> i really was not something i envisaged in 2013 it must be said now let me sh are we, can we can you pop that label up on the on the screen now label story <laughs> so yes it is if you go and search the birth of venus there's a great old painting um, on the of Venus on the shell, um, the hair covering all the parts is totally decent. And uh, so we've changed that. We've taken that theme because of your your name of your distillery, the nook, everything about this goddess, the huntress, uh, protector of nature. So we've made you into our very own Venus, uh, riding a, a white swan because 
Dr. Jim Swan was instrumental in in helping you set your certainly your your current style. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and yeah, element. So what your uh, yeah, he was very instrumental in our core expression, what we've released, and also what you'll be tasting in the boutique release. Um, we've since gone a little bit off the gym path and some of the other things that we've got in the uh, bubbling away for later years. But yeah, he was very instrumental to the to just how we approach whiskey making overall. Yeah, yeah. So we had you. You were like when we were talking. I think one of the podcasts a little while ago, or in the world whiskey summit i can't remember one of the times that we were talking to you in the past because it's we think it's really exciting what you're doing um i love this label i think emily's absolutely nailed it with the stills on the on the Drummond peninsula there i think it looks beautiful i agree um, you were doing two styles you were doing a, a style that so you could release you know taking jim's um guidance to creating a spirit for a young whiskey release and you were, talked about an older release that you wanted to lay stock down for a, a 10 year old 12 year old 15 year old going forward long-term planning and exactly. that's a different that, style again yeah exactly and i think i would characterize the young style which is what's in this boutique bottling as very like it's very typical of jim that is like his, you know, the core of what he was about is creating great young fruity whiskies, basically. Um, the old style is sort of not what he was about at all, although it was him that put that idea into my head. I said, well, you know, we were talking about the recipe and how we were going to make it. And, and I said, well, you know, how will this, how do you expect this to change over time? And he said, well, you know, past 10 years, it'll continue to get better, but it won't be the same as if you'd made it in a different way in the first place. And I was like, okay, well, how's that? So we ended up kind of having these two recipes that we run side by side in the distillery. We don't make a huge amount of the old, what we call the old recipe, which we think will be great after 10 years. Um, most of what we make is the young recipe. But um, yeah, it was him that put the idea into my head. And then beyond that, we also run yeast experiments. And that is a bit where we've gone away from the, the gym formula because he was quite clear in his own mind about which yeasts work whereas we're being a little bit more experimental with that side now. Now we, we mentioned 100% organic so organic um, all the way through organic grains organic farmers you're working with local farmers. Yeah exactly so we have 10 organic Scottish farmers um, that we work with and this has been in shaved, shaved and recharred cask, is it? That gym? No, this is um, this is just this is just ex bourbon. This is just ex bourbon. Okay. Just ex bourbon, and it's really quite fruity, isn't it? It is, and that's the that's from the new make. That was that comes a lot from. Well, I guess two things. One is the yeast we use. Um, but the other is having a very high cut point and capturing some of those lots of those esters early on in the spirit run. But our um, our core expression is sixty five percent shaved toasted recharred casks and thirty five percent bourbon. But this uh, boutique release is pure bourbon, so quite interesting for anyone who's also tried our core expression to kind of compare those two side by side. And um, I love the STR cask, but you can actually I think that new make comes through more clearly when it's just in a bourbon yeah i've got i've got your your first release um downstairs actually i have opened it and uh been drinking it hey. it's delicious and that's it that's at 46 i mean yeah i snoozed on the first one the, the inaugural release i missed that one i just thought you sent me that link and i thought well i'll go and get that and oh damn it's all gone <laughs> But uh, I did. I did manage to get um, batch one, and um, I ordered it without the packaging. Yes, thank you. Because I was plan. Yeah, well, I throw the packaging away as soon as I get the box. As soon as I've opened it, the packaging's gone. I keep the packaging if I'm not planning to open it immediately, just in case I end up giving it away. But um, I opened it immediately, so I ordered it without the packaging, which I think is a novel. Um, a novel thing to do. I think you, you were mentioning that everybody was ordering it with the very few people. I know, were it's ordering still the it. case. It's still the case. We're, um, yeah, we're, 
Yeah. We're still plugging away at it, hoping to um, hoping to persuade more people to to order it without the packaging. And we'll see how things go when we get away from Christmas and maybe when we're a bit further from our inaugural release, we'll persuade more people that they don't need the gift box. So you've got, you've got the second batch out now as well, haven't you? Uh, second batch is out now, third batch is out now, and we're bottling batch four. Wow. It's uh, so, really really taken off for you then. Yeah, it's great. So, yeah, the uh, guys at the distillery have been bottling constantly, which is um, which is great. That's exactly what we want. So we've been really pleased. Excellent. So the, uh, yeah, the, I mean, I, I will want to taste this alongside. I didn't even think about bringing the, uh, my bottle up. Yeah, um, yeah, I've got both Because the, the, the um, your, your bottling is bottled at 46, isn't it? Yeah. So I could take them down to around the same. But, um, yeah, I've just put a teaspoon of water in this, and it's really opened up. And someone mentioned chocolate, chocolate orange flavours, yeah. And I'm getting those chocolatey, orangey flavours, yeah, those even uh, the orange blossom, Kieran, I was getting... So I agree with you on that chocolate orange flavour, but um, I was going more blossom side on that orange, but there is a little bit of milky chocolate in there. Yeah, absolutely delicious. Yeah, I love our, I do love our pure bourbon casks. They're, um, feels like a very pure expression of what we do. Yeah, yeah, it tastes, tastes the distillery character. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Any, anybody got any questions for Annabelle? Um, send them up quickly because we've got a lot to get through. I mean, I you know we don't do whiskey tastings by half, and we've we've only got through four whiskies. We've got another six to get through, Annabelle. <laughs> Gonna be a busy night. Uh, it's a busy night. Yeah, we've got lots of Facebook on comments there coming through. Mango, someone saying mango. Yeah, it is fruity, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it is fruity. Coming through beautifully. And yeah, you heard it there. Batch three and four are out already. I saw batch two still for sale at one of our partner shops um, when I was just searching boutique and I knew he took some boutique nip near and I thought, because someone text messaged the company and said, yeah, we found one. And I, I went to have a look and oh, I was too late again. Oh. Um, so uh, I'm, I missed out. I, oh, he's got some over there, has he? Well, I'll go for that, but um, no, I didn't get one. Never mind. I've got some here and I've got some of batch two and um, I'm sure we can find some batch three and four. Uh, uh, yeah, going forward. Exactly. Batch, uh, yeah, batch three should be hitting the shop soonish, and then batch four, maybe before Christmas, but certainly starting to uh, bottle it soon. Yeah. And yeah, the, the bottle that you bottle, I mean, ours has got a great label on and just the standard boutique bottling. Any more boutique bottlings coming up? There's quite a few over in Europe at the moment where I looked where it all went and I did see a lot of it has already gone straight to Europe um, over your way, uh, Wim. Um, so you should be able to find some over there. But any more boutique bottlings? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure we can get, um, we can twist Annabelle arm um, to sneak another cask a bit later on. I'm <laughs> sure. We can't just sort of flood it. Um, what does the nearest future hold for Nick Um Good question. The near future holds, um, well, Christmas. And then uh, uh, we are planning some special releases for next year, but they are still a little bit under on the down low. So uh, you have to watch carefully for what they'll be. Um, and then we're also um yeah we've got a lot on our sustainability agenda for next year as well that's an ever improving thing for us we're always trying to do better so um trying to um yeah get off a carbon footprint as low as possible work on things like refill bottles and stuff to try and take the carbon footprint of the bottle down and yeah lots going on just to take to taking carbon footprints down is something you're looking at uh, being more sustainable uh, more env environmental you yeah, know taking all of those challenges on head first yeah exactly excellent um yeah it, whiskey boutique whiskey coming to europe we've got some great partners in uh, belgium with uh, premium spirit and in germany with kirsch whiskey so yes there is whiskey coming into europe when yeah any news on the bread whiskey the bread whiskey uh -huh. i remember when we were we were talking with rob yeah any news on the i'm bread sorry whiskey? we have made zero progress on that <laughs> 
yeah, you've got to check out that podcast. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it'll happen. We've got this just uh, yeah, as always, logistical tra- challenges getting the bread beer to Scotland for a start. <laughs> <laughs> That you have terms with retailers to get sustainable packaging used. Um, yeah, you're. Yeah. That's. Um, we, if I understand that question correctly, no, I think is the answer. Um, we actually are trying to persuade retailers to take the option without gift box, for example. Um, but it's it's quite hard for retailers right they take small amounts it's hard for them to predict whether the people are going to want gift box or not so understandably a lot of them just opt for the with gift box option um it gives them a simpler life i think it would be fair to say and certainly yeah. even on our own website having the without gift option gives us massive headaches we never have the right stock of with or without gift box in any place at any time <laughs> um <laughs> Ah, yes, so, I, think uh, I, I see why other people that. don't do it. <laughs> yeah, I seem to remember that headache when we switched from with without boxes to a box, um, and and then ran out of box. You know, you, the logistics. You know, let's bottle all this, and oh, we didn't order that many boxes. Um, yeah, uh, and getting that thing right. So yeah, I, they are a, a nice thing to have. But if you're going to open it, I'm not. Yeah, I don't need them. Um, exactly. Fortunately, ours just fold flat very quickly and go into the recycling bin but it does seem a waste doesn't it to just chuck it through well i'm enjoying having my bt bottle in its box for once so Um. (laughs) is is it in the distillery uh shop or the 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 back you know with all the other whiskies that you you started to create a library of what you're doing is the boutique one sitting there the thing is we opened it because we really wanted to drink it and I did toy with this a bit but we were there with the whole team and it had just been released and literally just arrived on the distillery office floor and we we're just feeling in a good mood so we opened it and drank it and we'll keep a bit but it was too good not to drink <laughs> excellent well that's what it's for whiskey is for exactly drinking. exactly yeah that's what it's there for perfect I'm going to go and let, I know you've had a long day today. Um, I, I have, I've had a double Zoom evening. It's like lockdown peak. <laughs> oh, yeah, like the Muppet Show, isn't it? Little yeah. windows, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to let you go and get some dinner and I'm going to carry on with the rye tasting. Amazing. It's so nice to see you, Dave. It's lovely to see you too. Thanks for having me. And Thank you for coming on. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Always a pleasure. All right, enjoy the rest of your evening. And I'll speak to you soon, hopefully. Bye. Bye. Oh, right. Let's get back in for some rye, shall we? Um, because we've got um we've got a lot to go through. So I'm gonna gonna have to wrap through these. Oh, why my screen is flickering now? This is not good. This is not good. Right, let's get some rye in the glass. Um, I'm going to pick, we finished with the Tennessee, so we had three. So let's get some Peerless in. Great story with Peerless. I'm going to have to open another box of glass. This is um, Peerless. Kentucky Peerless, three-year-old rye, 49.1% ABV, just 369 bottles. Recommended retail price is just a silver coin under £75. Now, Kentucky Peerless haven't disclosed their mash bill, but they will follow that U.S. rule of 51% corn, uh, rye in the mash bill, and ordinarily unmalted grains. Um, There is a real fabulous story with this Peerless, uh, Kentucky Peerless. It is a really great family story. The original distillery was in Henderson in Kentucky, which is what you can see on our label there with the Henderson Lewis bill. It was in Henderson, and um, it 80 years after the distillery. So this was the original Peerless distillery. You can see the original Peerless distillery on our label there. Um, it was a huge distillery. I mean, it, it grew enormously from when Henry Craver took it on. And when he took on this distillery, um, 
he he wanted the, the peerless brand was there and he built it up from just like a few barrels a week to hundreds of barrels a week so it was a big big distillery and you can see by the size of it there in this in this 1920s um rendering there on our label how it was um yeah it was a victim of prohibition it closed uh, the stills were dismantled uh, the, uh, the distillery was dismantled the stills were, actually went to vancouver um in canada which I hear in Prohibition, lots of the sort of bigger stills went to Canada and they went to Mexico. Um, certainly in New England and that sort of thing, the, uh, the, the Pennsylvania and Maryland rise and the New York rise, most of those stills were much smaller on farms and they were just scrapped. So this distillery disappeared, the Peerless brand disappeared, but in 80 years after that distillery was dismantled, great grandson secured a new distillery in Louisville. Um, so there's a, it, it, they got um, planning permission to resurrect an old building uh, and create the new Kentucky Peerless Distillery. It's a huge story. So this is um, a father and son, like the fifth and sixth generations of the original uh, founder of Henry Craver. Now, they also managed to... Um, secure the old distilled spirits plant number DSP KY50, um, which is which is another lovely story because you know, every distillery has a, a a number a DSP um, and KY the state and and number fifty being the original distillery number of the Kentucky Peerless. So the distillery is now in Louisville. Um, there is a road trip to the new distillery yeah i want to do the kentucky um whiskey trail one day simon absolutely and the tennessee and i want to hit colorado there's lots there's so much i want to visit um so our label there shows the old um distillery and in the three generations uh with baseball cards because there is a kentucky um bourbon baseball league um and Lewis is also home to a baseball uh, oh, sorry, uh, a baseball museum, um, the Slugger. And this is a three-year-old, so it is a straight rye whiskey. It is really cream soda on the nose for this one. It's beautiful, isn't it? I do reckon there's some corn. Absolutely. Yeah, there would be some corn in here, I'm sure. It's a Kentucky-style rye. Yeah, I think so too. It's delicious. It's beautifully balanced. Um really finely crafted isn't that spice is coming through really lovely now really exciting um we have master distiller and single barrel curator so caleb kilburn and john waddle will be joining me on a special um friday ridey ride day uh on instagram at four o'clock on friday the 11th of december so put that in your diary because i'm i'm really looking forward to talking to these guys yeah um, Immediately on the nose for me, I got those woody spices. There's some Sichuan peppercorns and cloves and nutmeg. It's nutty. Walnut, dry, toasted almonds. And there's that little bit of that toasted coconut, toasted coconut mushrooms, you know those little sweets? And every now and again, I can't find it right now, but we've done four whiskeys now. I get a ruffles bars it's very peculiar but particular ruffles bar because i don't know what a ruffles bar is but um hints little flashes of wild fennel which is something i really do enjoy it's really creamy and mouth filling mm. Mm. it caresses that palate doesn't it that honey that vanilla those peppery spices at the end the finish is kind of short it's sort of short, sweet, and a little toasted rye bread at the end there. But yeah, just a, a, a superbly crafted whiskey. Um, got another box of glasses out. Okay, Distillery 291. So this was the whiskey that sort of disappeared for a little while. Um, we bottled it. Uh, most of it sat in bond. Um, I know a little bit went out. Uh, but it really never got the love that it deserved. 
it is just 11 months old will you take a look at that color 11 months old now it's a great story about this whiskey because i met the founder of this distillery michael myers at a whiskey tasting judging uh, world whiskeys award judging ceremony in london several years ago 2018 it would have been and we've been judging. I wasn't on Michael's table. He was on another table because you're all on different tables when you're doing these judgings and you have different flights of whiskies brought into you. And I was on a great table with Andy Watts from South Africa. Um, I just, I mean, it was a who's who of distillers around me. You know, I felt a bit out of place with on the table that I was sitting on. But we were we were sitting there and we, just, I, we didn't get all the old stuff. When we were getting some of the unusual stuff and there was nothing that really blew us away. That, that afternoon. I know other tables did and uh, they had different things of everyone has different things on these um, on these tables. But um, yeah, we've been judging whiskey all day and there was nothing really f sort of blew me away. And then we went for a pub afterwards for a pint of Guinness like you do. Um, anyway, we, a small group of us ended up in Black Rock and then in the cocktail bar above. And I started talking to Michael uh, and Michael handed me this hip flask, the hip flask came out of his pocket and I took a sip and I said, bloody hell, that's the best thing I've tasted all day. What the fuck is this? And she said, oh, that's my rye. I said, I love it. I absolutely love what he was doing. I said, uh, have you heard of BTK whiskey? Uh, and he just jumped at it. He's, I mean, we had samples within weeks. He'd sent samples over. Uh, it's a great, great story. And yeah, we bottled a rye and a bourbon. So this is a Colorado whiskey. He set up the distillery up in Colorado Springs. I spoke to him on our Friday Rye Day, just Friday. It's on our Instagram TV catch up. I mean, he is just a charming gentleman. It is 61% malted rye and 39% corn. Aged in American white oak casks and then finished with Aspen staves for three to four weeks before being bottled. So this is his USP. These toasted staves that he drops in the cask. That's basically what they do. They drop these Aspen staves charred in the cask for about three to four weeks before being bottled. And I asked him, why did you do that? He said, well, I set up a distillery in Colorado and Aspen is a, a unique word. And I thought I needed a, a selling point. I needed to be unique. I wanted to make Colorado whiskey. I didn't want to be like everybody else. Uh, I just thought I'd give it a go. Uh, and he, he gave it a go and, and it worked and he's continued with it ever since. Now, Michael was a professional photographer up until he decided he had enough and he's going to go and build a distillery and he built his own still from his own old photographer plates and he taught himself to distill from books the internet and youtube uh, he ended up you know that that rye that i tasted at that london and above black rock out of his hip flask well that year he went on to win the world's best rye 2018 now he imports the rye from germany um, a lot of rye that's grown in Germany and Poland is actually exported to make American rye whiskies. Just 11 months old, a five to seven day fermentation. And it's, he uses a local brewer's yeast. So there's a brewery. If you go on the Google Earth and look down on the distillery, you can see there's a brewery across the road. They crop brewer's yeast from that brewery almost daily. They use a very, very slow distillation because that's something that he just saw on a YouTube channel um, about people distilling. He said, oh, right, well, that's distilled slowly. So he does everything very, very slowly. And he actually triple distilled. So he's grown. Um, when he first started with that first still that he made himself, he, he had it double distillation and went into a thumper keg, uh, which is a, a sort of a, a, a bootleggers moonshine way of double distillation. You distill once. And then you use the vapors coming off into a thumper keg. Google it and work out how it works. Because I'm not going to go into it right now, but it's quite clever. And you, we could all install one in our in our in our garages with one still thumper keg condenser. Um, but he uses that original still that he set up the distilling 
by himself. Uh, he started all on his own. Um, he, uses, he uses that. As the, the and so basically, Ep. Oh, no, okay. Hmm. So yeah, go and check out the Instagram. Michael is just you, you very little of Distillery Two Nine One over here. Um, I think we bought it all over here. Um, we did a bourbon and a rye, both eleven months old. This is sixty nine ninety four. Oh, it's not 69.95 it's cheaper than that i've got the wrong price there i've actually got written down here 169.95 and i know it's not that this is old-fashioned cola cubes cherry sours lots of rye toast oh i just i just love this stuff i got a bottle a long time ago when he came over on one i bought a bottle of his colorado whiskey it's delicious stuff. Um, yeah, find some, get it. It is really cool. Mm. So that was our little jaunt across America. We've gone right from the first ever blended empire rye. We've gone right back to the beginning with Copper Sea, how, you know, malted rye would have been. And then we've done a couple of big distilleries from Tennessee and Kentucky, Kentucky rye whiskies. And then we've gone back to this sort of small um, distillery in Colorado that's doing something unique with these Aspen staves within, I love the label on here. Um, it's a long story uh, on, on this label here. You can see that there. Michael Myers is apparently a movie um, horror film. And you all know that I don't watch movies, so it, it's in one of those horror movies. And you know, I don't watch movies, so let alone horror movies, but I have seen this meme being used and then there's some man ray and albert steigler who had a gallery because michael was a photographer a professional photographer fashion and um yeah go and watch the story because he tells the story about why it's distillery 291 why these people are on there um he loves the label i think it's a fabulous label too right let's go to europe let's come back over to here and grab a German rye. I'm going to grab the spree wood. I'm going to put the 291 distillery away. 11 month old. You can, it's a whiskey, isn't it? Come on, it is a whiskey. Whiskey is made in a distillery, not in the cask. Spree wood, a German rye. Great story. These guys went to visit this distillery. It was Spree Wild distillery they went to buy and buy a cask that's what they went to do that's all they went to do and you know we all buy too much whiskey and get told off when we come home with whiskey they just went to buy a cask of whiskey um, they came back with a distillery so that's a pretty cool story this is a two-year-old rye um, again a beautiful color because um, this is it's just um, American oak X bourbon casks. Um, yes, this is a first fill X bourbon cask. Um, two year old rye, 48.2% ABV, just 200 bottles, and this has a recommended retail price of one shiny coin short of 50 pound. So when they went to buy this cask of whiskey that made single malt whiskey, um, and they ended up buying the distillery, they decided they wanted to make rye whiskey. Uh, because the area is where, in, in Germany, uh, is where the rye is grown. It is sort of a, it's a big, big um, farming lands. And lots and lots of rye is grown. It's quite swampy, um, but rye is grown there. And some of the best rye in the world, most wild turkey um, rye comes from Germany. So they did more. There is still some sum in the distillery from the previous owner. They used two rye mash bills, 100% malted or 100% unmalted, where they use enzymes to get it going because there's no malted barley or no malted. They used two different styles of yeast for the two different ryes. 
So if they use a Belgian fruit beer yeast for their unmalted rye and an English ale yeast for their rye malt. Now this is uh, unmalted rye. Um, when they're using their rye malt, they're using a mixture of different ryes from light caramel and chocolate rye malts as well. But this is unmalted rye. They do a four to five day fermentation. And it is, I just think it's just a beautiful, no nonsense rye made with passion and provenance. So right from the, you know, the, the farms all around them matured in first fill, ex bourbon cast for two years. And that humidity of the swamp light you like the label on this one swamp like surroundings uh, our label has that um a german typical german sort of i mean if you look at if you go on google google the area where they are in the, in, in in this area of germany just south of berlin um it is beautiful the villages around there are absolutely beautiful but it is low-lying and swamp like <sighs> and that humidity and that swamp like surroundings have sort of amped up this interaction with the cast. So this is just two years in a first fill ex bourbon cast. Hmm. 100% unmalted. Difference between malted and unmalted. Very, very difference in, in the glass. Again, a great Instagram TV interview a couple of weeks ago, last week, two weeks ago, with Bastian, one of the co-founders. Really interesting. Go and watch it if you haven't already and, and listen to Bastian tell his story of what they do. Um, their whiskies are growing in popularity over here, um, known as the Stork. They've got their own brand. It's called Stork Club. Um, and that's named after both the famous Manhattan Manhattan nightclub. Manhattan is the sort of the, the cocktail for rye whiskey, Manhattan's. Just seem to go with rye. It's not an old fashioned to me. I mentioned right at the beginning, unless it's you know, it's not really an old fashioned. Uh, you can make old fashioned with bourbon, but really, it's a rye. Um, I just love this. It's just just so gorgeous. And we've got that stork club to a Manhattan club. Uh, everyone is drinking. Everyone is a stork, apart from the bouncers on the door, which are the crocodiles. And um, they're all drinking cocktails, Manhattans and coupes. And uh, yeah, Manhattan really became, has quickly become one of my favorite cocktails. And uh, just a couple of years ago, I didn't even know what Manhattan was. You know, I'm a simple man. I drink whiskey neat. I drink my coffee black, even my tea black. But I've learned more of a bourbon nose than a rye. I can tell you it's 100% unmalted rye. Mm. German rye banging stuff. Um, really loved it. What's next? Oh, the great, another great story. Let's put that back before I get lost. Danish rye. Now, this seems to have been really popular. It disappeared quite quickly. A couple of friends were calling me and asking. Has it all gone? Um, and I pointed them in the directions, and I've seen it's all gone there as well now. Um, so yeah, this is a three-year-old Danish whiskey. Another great story. Passionate. I mean, all these distilled stories um, that we're coming through. Most of these are, you know, great, great, passionate stories about people. Let's do something. Let's go and buy a cask of whiskey. Oh, let's come back with a distillery. Um, it's Downing Danish whiskey. Now, we did an interview with on our Instagram TV yesterday with one of the co-founders, Thursday today, yesterday, in our afternoon tea. And I knew that these guys, I've met some of the standing guys at some of the Danish whiskey festivals that I've done, and they've been wonderful, and the whiskey's been great. I really didn't have the insight that I got yesterday. It is pretty much pretty pretty impressive what they're doing uh, and that's what happens when you get four engineers getting together with a number of other people um, if you look on our label there uh, a butcher a pilot a doctor a teacher a chef uh, four engineers um, they have overcome lots of problems as they've grown floor malted grains 
70% malted rye, 30% malted barley. Uh, this one, our first ever release, is a Belize rum cask. Um, I just love the story. These guys have built much of their equipment. If you listen, they built this innovative steeping and malting process. Monkey shoulder. We're not doing any of that shit. Let's lay the bar. Well, let's think about this. Let's do this. Let's lay the grain out. Let's saturate it through misting it rather than setting it in a big tank. Let's just mist it and get it damp, get it humid, get it malting. And let's have a machine that actually turns it all over regularly for us um, so we don't have to do it and get monkey shoulder. It, it, is, it, it is a cool label. Yeah, it is a cool label as a shopping list. Yeah, stills, 24 of them, pot stills, Spanish onion shape. Yeah, it's a shopping list of with the coffee stain. Um, yeah, you can't see it on there very well. I'm not very good at holding anything up until the camera there, but the coffee stain and everything. Emily's just nailed this with all the little doodles on a piece of paper that I do. Ah, yeah, it is. There is a bit of rum notes straight off of here. Um, their mashing regime. Rye is notoriously difficult to to mash uh, and distill. And so they have something like a screw. I'm just going to listen to it. I mean, I didn't know. I mean, I've, I've heard, I've spoken to other distillers who've done stuff themselves and, and malted in sort of a, a washing machine drum, you know, that turning. Well, they've done a very sort of thing. It's, it's like a very big, long washing machine drum because um, rice sticks to everything. It is a sticky shit. Um, Kinyao, as they say in in Thai. So yeah, they, they they have designed a lot of their own stuff. And when they started, they started in an old butcher shop, an old abattoir, um, and they grow and they were in a just get onto their website and look at the distillery today. It is amazing. They started off right from the beginning with small Spanish made copper pot stills, direct fired. Uh, and as they've grown, they decided, well, we're not going to get big still. No, no, we're going to carry on using exactly the same as what we've got. They now have 24 of these little Spanish uh, pot stills. They use 16 of them as wash stills and, and eight of them as spirit stills. It, it's it's really just a great interview that we had yesterday with one of the founders, Lasse Vesterby. And I can't say Lasse in, in, in Danish. And I mixed it up. I did ask I can't. Now, this week started off really quite delicate and estuary on the nose. And there are hints of cedar wood. Now, I know what cedar wood is because I have a humidor behind me um, lined with cedar with some of my, cigar, some of my cigars. In, so. And it does remind me of that. But then there's that rye toast. Um, but there's also lots of honey sweetness, that runny honey. It's a very, very different. It's not that earthy honey that we had earlier on some of the American ones. This is really that sweet runny honey. And just a hint of citrus coming through. You can condense milk. No idea why, but it does. You can't be wrong, John. You're the captain. We all know that. On, on the palate, that rum influence was noticeable to me. This has been matured in a book. Belize rum cask, and they, they're beginning to find that some of their rums actually work, uh, rise work well in the, in, the, in, the, in the rum cask. Again, that little bit of fennel. Mm. Cracking rye. Yeah, I mean, just listening to the passion yesterday, <laughs> listening to the passion of everyone I've been speaking to about why they're making rye, um, it, it has been just a huge insight um, into what these guys are in. It is great stuff. I, I, you know, I, I loved rye to begin with, and so so um, I loved rye right from the beginning. I got it immediately, and um, the only drink, drink, the only cocktail I drank was an old fashioned. Um, whenever I was out, every every one of my cocktails was just small and brown, um, old fashions, and, and it had to be why. But this is stunning, stunning. It is good, isn't it? It is cool. And you listen to their story about what they go through. It is good. 
So yeah, just 249 bottles. It was almost sold out across the UK. I was chasing it. Uh, there are a few of, of our retailers, partners, um, will be having stock in. There's, there's, there's still a little bit of UK stock around. Um, so it should be back in stock with a few of the, but it, there's very, very little of it left. Um, I know one of my friends managed to find some in Europe. Um, one of my other friends found some in um, Nicholson Perks. You know, I went to get one there today and they'd sold out too. So, um, and they had some on Tuesday night, but now not. It's peppered caramel thing. Kieran, if it's your thing, it's cool. I'm happy with that. I just think it's, it's a bit of sweet tea almost in there as well. Again, that finish is quite short though, um, but nutty and a lot of milk chocolate. If you missed our IGTV series yesterday, go and catch up because it is, is a, a fabulous story get onto their website look at what they're doing i mean just it is a little cathedral um their distillery it's just they they revamped all the website just just before we released our our Y series they were going through sort of a, a revamping phase and so they, their website was down and then it came back up and yeah there's just some beautiful beautiful pictures of these 24 stills, 24 stills. So it's like you know, Gl Glenfiddich, but in miniature. Um, um, where were we? Let's go to Helsinki. Let's go to Helsinki. Again, another cracking interview um, on our afternoon tea series. So what I've been trying to do, uh, because of the time difference, is to do afternoon tea with our European distilleries. See, up here for thinking, down there for dancing. Um, <laughs> thanks brian thank you very much oldies like dave yeah i know yes snickers mouth and bar it's always a mouth and bar yeah i've been trying to do afternoon tea sessions on wednesdays you know like we used to do in the old days but have um the distiller come in and talk to us with the european distilleries and trying to do the fridays as a rye day with our american distillers um we had michael myers last week for Distillery 291, we have our very own Sam Simmons tomorrow. Uh, so that should be a lot of fun because I'll be um, asking the blender how he came up with our Empire Wide Blend. But yeah, we had well, one of the co-founders, Miko, uh, is a real character and a beautiful character. I haven't met him in real life. And I, you know, he's just one of those guys who just, I know, I'm going to get on with this guy. He's a lot of fun. Um, this is 100% malted rye, Finnish rye. They use Finnish. Yeah, we're going to finish this. I'm not going to. Yeah, we're going to finish. This has been matured in ex Oloroso casks um, for full term. It is a two-year-old. So we can't call it a whiskey. But it's a fucking whiskey. It's, it's a whiskey. It is a whiskey to me. Um, it's 49% ABV, just 200 bottles, and you can get this for one shiny coin um, short of 60 pound. We didn't, you don't see a lot of rye finished in or matured in sherry car. We have released some American J. E. Pepper, another great story wise, that have been finished in Oloroso PX and Outcasks. We did a, a series of a little while ago. Again, great rye, great story great passion this this story of the helsinki distilling company goes back a long way with a group of friends and, and where did the idea come from well it's typical finish um it's um i've got to change this slide in a sauna of course um that is miko on the label right there um he's getting ready to go into the sauna if you look at our label we've got lots of things going on in there um it is an old building, uh, a listed building in the heart of Helsinki. It's been lots of things, in, including an abattoir, a car wash. Uh, and we've got the car wash on the label there, the Monopoly car. Um, because Finnish, 
alcohol industry, um, business is a monopoly. It's an alcohol monopoly in Finland. Um, and distilling was completely illegal in Finland. It was until 13 years ago. Um, they had their own prohibition and it was state controlled. And then for anybody else, it was illegal to distill. The Helsinki distillery is right in the center of town. Um, it's another place I'd love to go and visit. I've never, I don't think I've ever been to Finland. Um, no, I haven't been to Finland. Um, I've been to most of Europe with, with the yachting industry before whiskey, um, but I never went to Finland, Norway, Denmark, Sweden. Yeah, but never, never, never Finland. Um, but it's right in the heart of town and it's one of three new distilleries making whiskey now. So although all year round temperatures in Helsinki lead to a much slower interaction with wood, which it, we're talking to them and presents a preferable situation for maturation in powerful first fill casks, which normally overpower our spirit. So this is in Ex Oloroso for a full term. Watch the IGTV because so, and he's we've got that sort of film crew waiting for him up on the roof there. You can just see that on the on the roof there. That is the distillery building there. Um, they've got plans. There's no someone poking to change the slide. That is the Helsinki. That's the one. I've got the right one. <laughs> rosalyn has got snacks. I forgot the snacks again. I haven't got very good. My snack game is pretty poor, to be honest. I must admit, Dr. Whiskey has always got snacks, and I fail to remember the snacks. Yeah, someone mentioned fig rolls. I, I mean, when I first noticed this, I was getting that sort of spicy black cherry and then i put fig roll in my notes someone mentioned fig roll where was that kieran um i mentioned yeah yeah fig roll i mentioned fig rolls down here in my notes as well which is means i'm not going totally crazy or just you and i are totally crazy kieran it is really rich and sweet and spicy like a booze filled fruitcake on the palate Thanks, Simon. Thanks for the hint for changing the slides. Yeah, I'm not very good at slides. I don't know why I'm allowed to be controlling any of this, to be honest. I have got a handler behind here who is managing me to make sure I don't go completely off the rails. Oh, <laughs> well, you put your full name up there, was then. I don't know why you aren't here presenting this, you know. You should be here too. Come on in. Um, yeah, if anyone wants to come in. Yeah, dark cherry, John. John, that's exactly. Um, it's, it's, that's that sherry cask. I mean, that's what, why we picked it, because, I mean, that, you don't see why full-term maturation in, in sherry. And it is very different. different. So malted rye, um, where we started with the copper sea malted rye but very different and the finish is a lot longer and it's more to me i was thinking it's like a mulled spice spiced mulled wine sort of sort of finish there it is really well balanced again cracking been an hour and a half let's get on to the millstone millstone we want rods <laughs> okay i've changed the slide simon I'm, I'm there now on the slides so we've got that um yeah so millstone is where i had my first rye so i thought we'd finish this evening with a millstone now, I've spoken to Patrick a number of times because we have bottled some Millstone. This is a label you will have seen before because we have bottled some great secret malts. Thank you, Boutique Whiskey, um, for letting me know that the slide has changed. Patrick is just a, oh, just a lovely person. You just want to hug him. Um, such a great sense of humour, such a passionate distiller that's been doing this since he was very, very small. Um, 
he comes from a family of distillers. His father was a distiller for a um, for another company and decided that I can do this better uh, and started his own distillery. And so Patrick was put to work as a very early age because he was small and he could fit in the stills to clean them out. And I have seen pictures on his Facebook page recently that he's got his kids in, in, in there as well. Um, but he loves, so Patrick is coming to talk to me um, Wednesday, the 2nd of December. Uh, there is, if you look on Instagram TV, you can find Patrick on there talking to me about his single malts. Find it on Instagram TV. He is just a great, great guest. His true passion is pot stills and rye. Uh, so this is a three-year-old rye whiskey, 50% ABV, just 390 bottles. Um, I've got the recommended retail price here wrong again, because this is nowhere the what I've written down here, and I can't remember it off the top of my hand. That's what happens with copy and paste. Now, the Dutch have a really long history of distilling rye. We mentioned right at the beginning German German corn, which is used like a half and half, like a new make and a beer in Germany. The Polish have their starker, which was aged in oak casks, but flavoured with herbs. The Dutch have been using rye because it's a cheap grain. They prefer wheat, according to Patrick. They prefer wheat to make their bread rather than rye, whereas Germany, Austria use rye to make bread. Uh, Danish use rye to make bread. They prefer wheat. Thank you, Batiki Whiskey, 50 pound. I'm nowhere near that. I'm I'm way above that. I'm in another stratosphere. Um, maybe I was thinking about what I spent on whiskey recently. Um, yeah, they've been making, uh, use, using rye for a long, long time. Um, they're Gen Geneva, they're Geneva, Geneva. Now this, I mean, some of those other rides are really shout, uh, really shy. I, I take this as this shouts at you. This shouts, yeah, I am right. Look at me. I absolutely, yeah, winter greens, yeah, menthol, absolutely. It's big. It's bold. It's right up front. Um, it's nutty. It is nutty. It's definitely nutty. There's 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 maple wood. There's white toast. There's salted caramel. There's hints of of nut. I clove baked spiced apple um i think patrick i mean patrick's been doing it a long time um his right first rye distillation was a long long time ago i can't remember it quite um off the top of my head but we will have this chat on afternoon tea on wednesday the second don't miss it or catch up later 50 50 malted unmalted rye mash bill one of the the longest fermentation times I've come across, eight to nine days. Now, most of them are four to five to six to seven days, but eight to nine days with his ride. I know he does seven days. Um, I am right. <laughs> um, I know he does seven days for his malts, um, eight to nine days with his ride. Double distilled in copper pot stills. Everything is copper pot stills. He has a plethora of copper pot stills to play with he loves copper pot stills a very very simple cut point uh 68 to 70 percent tea tree clove woody drop yeah it is spicy uh this has been matured in virgin oak cask american oak with a number three or four char is what we generally go for and char um, I asked him if he would come and talk to me for afternoon tea again for, you know, we've had it, we had him on our World Whiskey Summit. We had him to talk about, um, we had him to play games with us on an afternoon tea in the early days. We had him to come and talk about his, his single malt uh, when we released our World Series. And he's definitely up for coming up and talking about rye. I said, will you come and join me and talk about rye? He said, you won't be able to stop me talking about rye. So um, it is a big bold rye i love it i absolutely love it this is where this sort of stuff this sort of thing i think it was a milroy's if I, I have to look at the old whiskey discovery log 
I could tell you the date and where I had it, but I haven't got it up now, so I might have to go and get the the old, um and just it is bold. I mean, it really is bold. Completely different to some of the Canadian rye that I went on to taste. Um, big, bold, beautiful. Now I know I've got some slacks here. I meant to have this other computer here with um, with communication for my team because I might be going off piste. I don't know. And my computer's died here, so I'm just going to boot this up. That one minute. Oh shit! Wrong password. Um. Yeah. So. Distillation. Um, tied to tradition of Geneva, not gin. Well, the, 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 the Dutch and Belgium gave us, gave the, gave the English gin um, from your Geneva. Oh, this is just so, so, so cracking. So that was our final one. We've done nine rise and one single malt. I know you don't have them all. Um, I'm, I don't know if you had them all. I'm not sure how many. I saw some of the pictures coming through and you've had lots of different um, rise in your pack. And I knew I had a list that I had to cover, but I really wanted to talk about all of them because all nine of them are so different, yet so similar. Um, <coughs> Damn, that wasn't meant to happen. I don't know why that fell over, but nothing's broken. Everything's fine. That was the advent calendar being fallen over. And the spring would have fallen. Yeah, yeah, I just knocked the bottle over. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Uh oh, everything's fine. Nothing's broken. There's no liquid on the floor. Boutique bottles bounce rather well. Um, you know, that just fell off the top and it knocked the spray went down and um, they all bounce up here so it's um, it is all a balancing act and that's upside sort of down and we'll put everything back and of course I've got the world whiskey blend hiding in the corner and that fell down as well but as you can see there's no leakage whiskey down medic medic yeah <laughs> sorry about that that's me carelessly putting something away. Bottles are drunk. Yeah, it is. Bottles should be drunk, Simon. <laughs> yeah, uh, my carer has come in. I've got trousers on and everything tonight, man. Um, oh. So, yeah, that's where it all started, Millstone, for me. And that's where we're going to finish this evening. I hope you've enjoyed our little foray into rye. I mean, if you haven't listened to the Uncorked Whiskey Session, rye sessions, I, I just go and do it because rye history is fascinating. And Sam and I get to say old Monongahalan, which is something great to say. Um, I just picked up the Empire rye to pick up that again. And it's... Oh. If you don't like the copper, copper sea, if you don't like the copper sea, that's okay because it is really where it started. I'm pretty certain this is closer you can get to old Monongahela. Mm. It's just so bready that it's just gone really bread though. And I'll be making making bread on Saturday morning, so check out the pictures on social media. I need to make bread Saturday morning. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you so much for why did they fall over? Why did they fall over? Why we don't know. So, why? What is it good for? Absolutely everything. Absolutely. Love me some old Molangahela. Yeah. Me too. It's a great, great history. American whiskey. I mean, when you think of American whiskey history, you just think from post-prohibition because prohibition just destroyed so much. 
That's a dreadful experiment. And as for Tennessee having it so much longer, even worse. So, yeah, I'll be back um, afternoon tea. No, Friday, Friday, tomorrow. Hawaiian shirts, don't forget the hat. I hope you're wearing hats. Um, I hope you've enjoyed a little jaunt across the world of rye um, and see why I'm passionate about rye whiskey. Try it. I mean, all of these will work great in cocktails, but they're just this great sipping, aren't they? Um, thank you so much. Yeah, it's lovely to see uh, all the comments and and in, in the chat here. I wish I could see you in person. I wish we could all be in a room together. Um, and I wish we could have some hugs. I mean, so many people I haven't hugged for such a long time. Oh, God, let's hope we can um, sort this bloody COVID out. Now, there are, let, look, have a look at this. Now, while you're there, just have, have a look at this. Because, have a look at that. Now, I showed my daughter this. I hate her already. Um, she couldn't stand up from laughing. So I bought this and just delivered today. It's Highland number three. I don't know what distillery it is. It's one of our scotches. It's a little exclusive. Um, it's got my face on it, apparently, doing this. But um, check out the scotch releases. I mean, just brilliant scotch releases as well. If you want to know about the scotch releases, I will be talking about them um, going forward, uh, as I always do. Um, next Thursday, you can talk, uh, come and see Pete and I, um, Boutique Pete, uh, doing Tots and Drams night. Um, so we're going to play um, against each other because I want to learn about rum. I don't know anything about rum. Rum was just a, a juice for falling over. And he wants to know a little about whiskey. So we're going to do a Tots and Drams session. We did our first one last Thursday. Uh, we're doing our next one next Thursday, which will be cool. So I'm going to try them on some, some stuff. Afternoon teas on Wednesdays, Friday Fridays on Fridays, two o'clock and four o'clock. And if you're a whiskey club and you want me to come in and present some boutique whiskeys, give us a shout. I live on social media. You know that I'll come and do that. I did one for a, a little whiskey club last Friday evening. We had a lot of fun. Um, tasting through their line up that they come in and which was great so um you can do that but, but thank you so much for joining us about why um there'll be a new series of whiskies coming soon mm -mm -mm. working on them now i've got the samples on my desk right here and um I'm pre we're presenting them to the sales team next week but they will be coming out to you in the new year um Toss and Dram sounds quite early. It's fun. It's a fun evening because Pete is passionate about rum. Um, so thanks ever so much and um, lovely to see you all. Cheers.